Hello and thank you for watching this screencast. My name is Andras Tantos and in this short presentation I will show you how to use the Cray1 simulator that I wrote to submit jobs uh, to the COS operating system running on it. So we left off uh, our uh, previous video by completely booting the system. That's where we are going to pick up now. Just to recap, uh, the three terminals that you see up here are the kernel uh, sessions and they are serial terminals attached to the IO processors that are installed in the system and this window down here shows a station which is again a serial terminal that can be used to interact with the actual operating system. The system is fully booted and you can see the startup complete message being the last one uh, displayed. So before we can uh, start uh, submit any jobs there are a couple of things that we will have to do but one of the things that is uh, uh, interesting is that we can start multiple consoles with the cons console command these consoles will be again serial terminals in the real hardware attached to the IO processors and they display messages for the same session that is, this is, you can think of it as a very early version of multi-monitor. You can have many displays uh, attached to a single session. So uh, you can start all sorts of commands in these uh, windows. Uh, one interesting thing to do is to look at the stat class command that will display job classes. When you submit a job it will be assigned to a class and its handling will depend on uh, what the various settings for that particular class is. You can see that uh, the predefined classes are uh, job, I guess, jobs error class, the startup class, the interactive class, uh, system class and normal. You can also see that all of the uh, classes except for normal, which is the default for any jobs that you submit, are on. So if you just submit a job at this point, it will not get processed because its class, which is normal, uh, is off. Another thing that we can do is st start yet another console and display the job queue in there using the status command. And of course, you can see that the job queue is empty. So let's uh, submit a job. Uh, there aren't that many jobs uh, on the hard drive that you can submit. Actually, you can look at the files uh, that are available on the hard drive uh, using the fstat command. But as you can see, you have to uh, pr uh, type that into the uh, kernel console. One of the classes, or one of the uh, jobs that are available is called jtest30. It doesn't do much uh, because the command that it actually tries to use is not on the system, but we can use it as a test. So let's just submit that. J test 30. And as you can see, uh, the job entered the job queue and its status is queued, obviously because we don't have the class enabled. So Let's enable the class. Now it's on, but the state of the job is still queued. The reason for that is that the number of jo jobs that can be simultaneously processed in the system is set to zero here, and the pool is set to zero as well, which means that even though this job now is eligible to processing, there's no place to process it because the system cannot take that. Uh, there, there's uh, no available job pool to put it into. To fix that we will have to use the limit command that changes those values. So let's say we set it to 5 and now suddenly the job entered uh, the processing stage, uh, in fact it already finished processing and it's in the transfer stage where its results are transferred out of the system. I will show you another window now. Uh, this window shows the printer, the line printer output. 
What happens is that when a job gets, gets executed, its output and the log files generated for it gets redirected by default to a line printer, and this line printer in this simulation is uh, logged into a file. So this is the content of that, and you can see that uh, the log starts, uh, or the dump starts with a header page uh, stating the name of the job, and then down below you see the logs generated for it. This particular job doesn't have any output, so you don't see any of that. And in the log status, you see that the job got aborted. And the reason for the abort was that the data set was not found. And the data set that we were looking for was test 30. And test 30 was not existent on the mainframe as a data set, so we couldn't load it, so the job got aborted. If you look at the source code of this particular job, you will see that all it does is that it uh, tries to execute test 30, which obviously is missing, so it's not going to work. Another thing we can try, something that actually works to at least a certain degree, is uh, the GenCat uh, job. So let's submit that. You will pretty soon see it being queued. Now it's waiting on system. And now you can see that it grabs another data set called GenCat which is now transferring into the mainframe. And once it gets in, now it starts executing. There's another message that just showed up. You can see the M appearing here again. So let's look at the messages. And this particular message uh, asks us uh, whether we really want to run GenCat. Now GenCat generates master catalogs, which is essentially the root directory of uh, of the file system. So this is a dangerous command. Uh, things will be destroyed on the hard drive if you do that. That's why uh, the system wants to make sure that we're certain about this. But yeah, sure, the hard drives are empty at this point anyway. So we'll just reply 19 go to that. And at this point, uh, you can see the uh, the the job executing. If you want to see uh, some details about what the system is doing, you can look at monitor uh, CPU, which shows you the CPU usage. You can look at monitor uh, disk, so you can see how the disks are uh, working. And you can see that since we are writing master catalogs, it's not terribly surprising that the system spends quite a bit of time waiting on uh, I.O. And you can see that the I.O. is actually going into the master hard drive, the first hard drive installed. And not so long after that, yes, now all the other hard drives are busy and you're uh, spending even more time waiting on I.O. And not so long after that, uh, the process will finish and the job will get transferred out and you will be able to look at the logs again in the line printer output. There we go. The job is almost done. So let's bring up the line printer. You can see now uh, the log. If you scroll back up, you see again the name of the job that we just submitted. It actually does generate some output, so you can see its progress, that it generated a master and a backup catalog, and then you can see uh, the, the associated logs. So thank you again for watching. I hope you enjoyed uh, this little demo.